How do land surveyors use drone LiDAR technology? Well, today I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia with Daniel Windham of Morbass Consultants. We're flying the Rock R2A LiDAR to get some contours and topography of this area around us. Then we'll head back to his office and check out the data. Let's fly. <laughs> So how do land surveyors integrate drone LiDAR technology into their workflow today? That's what this video is about. And quick plug, if you guys like these videos, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, but let's get back into the video because what we're doing is we're going with a land surveyor firm and they're building a design level topo for their engineers. And basically the idea here is that they need to build a surface in you know, 3D CAD software so that way their engineers can design a new sidewalk that's gonna go in to service a new subdivision. And the reason that they have to do all this design level topo is that it needs to integrate with existing infrastructure. So you got sidewalks, you got roads, you got waterways underground, you got railroad tracks. There's a lot of assets that belong to a lot of different parties that need to be integrated and played with nicely. So the step one of doing all that is getting a very accurate survey of where all of those assets are today so that way the engineering firm can bring that surface and bring all those features in and start designing their, their new work on top of that existing work. Because at the end of the day, we all need to play friendly together and everything needs to work together. So I'm out there with Daniel Windham and Morbass Consultants and he's gonna show us exactly what they're doing. But this video, I'm gonna let Daniel really take the lead and explain to you guys what they're doing because they do this every day. Let's hear from Daniel. Yesterday afternoon, 4.30 in the afternoon, we find out we need design grade topo in the next two or three days. So this morning, we're out here with the LiDAR to try to capture a mixture of field run conditional survey, traditional survey, and we're gonna use the LiDAR to get from our site down to the adjacent site for the utility upgrade. And so we've got two different jurisdictions with two different water lines. We've got a sewer line, all that stuff has come together right here, right by this railroad in the right of way. And so what we're doing is we're getting this development, enough water, and we need to connect the uh, sidewalk, just seven feet wide. It's gonna go from the grocery store down to this development so people can walk from their townhomes to get groceries and back. So what's challenging about this is this road is extremely busy and it's gonna be dangerous for people to be out capturing topographic shots in the middle of the road. We've got a railroad over there, we've got a road right here, we've got busy intersections all throughout. And so for safety reasons and for time, because in a conventional survey, you might be able to get the edge, but you're not going to get the whole road. Um, it'd take three or four days. And we need to get this in three or four hours. And so what we're going to do is we're going to combine some GPS and conventional shots on site and down the road. And then we're going to use LiDAR to cover the entire project area. So we're going to duplicate the existing shots so we can check in and use our ground control. And then we're going to capture anything that we can't get with conventional survey methods in the time period allowed. Let's go capture some ground points. Ground survey. So I'm going to get over here and use the GPS for the data collection app to get the edge of this graveled area. So we can use that to check against the LiDAR data to make sure everything's hitting right. And I'm just going to make a point in each section using uh, RTK networking to make sure everything's within about a tenth of a foot. This will be the end of our line. We can use the check against this. We'll take a shot. All right, let's go fly. So we just finished getting the ground shots and now we're going to take off with the M300 with the R2A and get the rest of the topography with the LiDAR. So let's take off and fly. All right, so Daniel just finished flying the LiDAR. He got some of those ground control points with his GNSS receiver. Now we're all done here in the field. We're gonna go back to his office and start processing that data. Let's get going. All right, so we went ahead and uploaded the data to the Rock Cloud from what we flew earlier. 
And we've already got the processing done via Rock Surveyor. And so our normal workflow is I upload everything to the Rock Cloud and I kind of let it do all the heavy lifting so I don't have to do it in the office. And I come back when it's done and we start out with a raw point cloud. Um, it processes it and categorizes everything based on our specifications. And what we have here is the full point cloud with all the uh, LiDAR classification schemes thro thrown in there. We've got all the different colors signifying the different layers. And But what I really need is I need to go in here and I really only care about the ground. So I haven't had to do anything. I've just uploaded everything with my control. And so we were going to go show the ground. And now we've isolated the ground surface and I usually turn on the road surface as well. And so we have our contours turned on already. You can see it without and with if you can isolate. That's a high point cloud density. And so you've got to compare this to what we traditionally do which would be a two-man to three-man surveying crew out there with a rod and a total station, you know, capturing maybe, you know, on a good hour, a couple hundred shots. And, you know, we've got probably 450,000 ground shots in here in just a small area. So what we're going to do is take a look at how the contours look going down the road. A road is a good place to isolate and to check and see how the processing is done. And based on the field conditions and based on everything that we've seen with our own eyes in the field, we come back in the office and we see, okay, this flow kind of checks out to how I remember the road looking. We've got ditches on both sides and we're going up and we've got an intersection with the railroad that we saw and we're seeing everything checks out really good in our area of interest. And we're catching it all the way to the site right here where we've been up and this was the parking lot we were in and we're getting a really good point density and we're able to look at these contours and everything checks out. We walked around in this parking lot and we saw the low spot, we saw the drain inlet and it was right here. And so everything's checking out to where it needs to be in X, Y, and Z. Um, we've already checked our ground control points and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the outputs from the rock surveyor and in my typical workflow, to combine traditional surveying and LiDAR surveying, we're gonna take the deliverables from the rock surveyor and we're gonna put them in the virtual surveyor program to get us the points that we need to build a civil 3D surface. So this is virtual surveyor. And what I use that for is I take the digital elevation model from the rock surveyor deliverable. And then I upload it into virtual surveyor. And the goal of this is to isolate and take all of those hundreds of thousands of LiDAR points and turn them into uh, civil 3D points for a surface that I'm able to combine with our field surface so that it doesn't overload the design surface with LiDAR and conventional data because we don't need to duplicate areas that have been surveyed conventionally with LiDAR data. So we're going to use this and we're going to use the various drawing tools to go in and say, okay, well, I need to get the, for example, the center line of the road. I don't need, you know, 100,000 points along the center line of the road. I just need it in the same way that we would shoot it conventionally. And so I'm able to actually just go in and create center line of road shots. And these aren't exactly perfect, but you can see right there in the LiDAR, we're just catching each little point. And when we're done, we'll have this whole road from here to here. And then we'll go down the edge of the road and we'll go down the top of the ditch, the center line of the ditch and the other side. And we're going to start creating cross sections with virtual surveyor using the LiDAR data from the rock cloud to be able to generate those so that we don't have to go shoot all those conventionally. So let's take all of our data and put it together in civil 3D. So we've got the rock surveyor generated contours and the digital elevation model we use from the rock surveyor in virtual surveyor to help capture additional survey points so that our survey crew did not have to go in the middle of a busy intersection. So we wanna keep them safe and we're still able to get that survey grade data by using this combination of methods and getting everything put together in Civil 3D to generate a design surface. The design surface is what our engineering group will use to help this utility survey get turned into a design. And then we're going to be able to make sure that in the future, when we go to actually build this site and on the surveying side, we do our construction staking project, that all of our data is gonna hit all together throughout the length of the project. So we've got conventional surveying, we've got GPS surveying that we saw out in the field earlier, getting that edge of this driveway right here. 
and that's helping us understand if the LiDAR is aligned properly and everything looks good and it's great data. We've got good point cloud density. And so now we're able to take our survey, rock surveyor contours right here. We've got our civil 3D design service on the bottom and you can tell you know, by meshing together contours um, from rock surveyor and conventional surveying methods, we're able to really dial down the design so that we're able to generate a really good set of plans for our client and that this site is gonna have smooth sailing when it comes to construction. Now Daniel is able to get that design level topo to his engineers and they were able to design that sidewalk from that new subdivision down to that grocery store. So in recap for this video, a few things I found really interesting about what Daniel told us is one, he mentioned out in the field that they were doing in three hours, which used to take them three days. So three days times eight hours a day, that's an 8x improvement in speed. That's awesome. And the other thing was that he was able to keep his guys safely away from the road where there was a lot of traffic. So before they had to go stand in the middle of the road and get center line shots using their GPS equipment, and now they can stay away from the road and fly the drone over and get that same level of data. And the third thing I found really interesting was that the drone LiDAR was not actually being used to replace all their land surveying techniques. It was used to augment them. So now they were able to do their da the data acquisition faster and more efficient and safe safely, but it didn't actually replace the need to still get a few shots with their GPS equipment and as well integrate that all into the same data structure and deliver that as a design level topo. So these three things are really interesting to learn in this video from Daniel and Morbass. So I'm gonna leave the video right there and I'm gonna put the link for Morbass down below as well as for Daniel, I'm gonna put his LinkedIn there. And for everyone here, I hope you learned something and you found something interesting about this video. If you did, please like, subscribe and share the video and I'll see you here next time here on Indiana Drones.